Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. It's Mike here. I thought I'd come on today and show you guys this. This is uh, my 2017 uh, Epiphone Les Paul Standard Plus Top Pro. Uh, I got this guitar right about this time of year um, in 2017 uh, when it came out. I bought it sort of on an impulse at Guitar Center. I had seen pictures of them uh, beforehand uh, and I really liked the finishes. I mainly play strats. I do have a, a Les Paul Studio. Just trying to get the tuners in here so you can see them there, Grover tuners. Um, I do have a Les Paul, a uh, Gibson Les Paul Studio, uh, and I also have a Les Paul uh, CM, which is one of the lower end models. Um, but I, I've never had a Gibson Les Paul standard. Uh, and I've always liked the finishes, so that's what uh, that's what drew me to this one. It really is a beautiful guitar, especially in this um, this blue. Uh, the um, the top, I'm sure, is you know not a full top and probably a veneer of some sorts. I don't know the the exact specs of it, but the um, there's a lot of pros and cons to this guitar uh, that I thought would be interesting to to kind of walk through. You know, there's a lot of uh, sound demos uh, out on the uh, in the, the internet already, and um, I'll, I'll definitely play this for you. But I wanted to walk through this and and kind of give my opinions on um, you know what you get for the money that you pay in comparison to what else is out there, uh, and um, who I think this guitar is best for, uh, and some of the um, some of the the pros and cons that that come along with it. Uh, so let's, you know, with that being said, let's 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 get started. Um, I'm going to start from the top here. So one of the things I was kind of stoked about for the Epiphones is that the headstock angle is a little bit less than uh, what Gibson's headstock angle is. And if you know about Gibson's, there's a lot of um, complaints that. Uh, um, you know, people say about the guitars going out of tune, and this headstock break angle here is one of the things that they point out as being being the cause. But on the Epiphones, the uh, the break angle is a little bit less. So, you know, however big of a problem that is for the Gibsons, um, you know, theoretically it would be less of a problem for the Epiphones. And uh, I can say that this guitar it stays in tune really, really well, uh, better than I expected. You know, I um I was uh, planning for this to to not really hold its tune very well because of the price point that it, it that it's in. It's a um, I paid I think five hundred and fifty dollars and um, that was a fifty dollar sale I think around Thanksgiving uh, at Guitar Center. So it's um, it's it's kind of a mid priced you know mid priced instrument I would say um, aimed at you know beginners to intermediates. Um, although I, I think that this is you know a great gigging guitar. Uh, just because of the way that it plays, uh, but we'll get get into that in a little bit more detail um, a bit later on. So the uh, the the headstock angle and the tuning of the guitar overall is uh, is really good. I mean, I've uh, I leave this guitar out just because you know, like I said, I really love the the way it looks, and I leave it on a stand because every time I, I walk by it, I just want to pick it up and play it. It just you know, it just looks really kind of badass. So. Um, you know, I leave it leave it out to inspire myself, and most of the time, you know, it works like a charm. When I walk by, I, I'll pick it up and I'll uh, I'll play a couple um, licks. The um, the tuners are are Grover tuners. I don't know about you know what Grover's line of tuners, what the cheapest ones are, what the more expensive ones are. Uh, I would imagine that these are you know probably somewhere in the middle, uh, but. These tuners are really good. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite uh, features of the guitar. I mean, obviously, um, you know, I, I probably would, me personally, prefer uh, locking tuners, um, but, you know, that's not really a reasonable expe expectation for, um, you know, a guitar in this price range. But these are really, really nice. Uh, they, they have a, a nice... Um, a nice feel to them when you turn them uh, it, it's an immediate reaction from the string uh, it moves in you know a ratio or an increment that um, it, it's really easy to tune there's no like crazy jumps or you don't have to turn like 16 times for for uh, for the peg to move so um, you know and like I said they hold the strings uh, really well if you string this thing up right um, you know and you put a little bit of um, graphite in the nut uh, you're not going to have any problems with the tuning, um, so it's th that that was a big uh, big positive surprise for me. Now, 
The fretboard is a rosewood fretboard. It's got a painted on binding. And I, it's kind of off white. It contrasts a little bit with the nut, which is a little bit more white. Um, but overall, you really can't tell it's painted on unless you ran, ran your finger over it. Um, I think it really makes the guitar, because it runs all the way to the body, you know, and all the way around. Uh, it really just makes the guitar just look that much better. Um, it's, uh, you know, I, I, I can imagine what it would be like if it was all, it was all blue, if the neck was all blue. I, I don't, I, you know, and I, I really don't think that I, I would like that look as much. So um, this, uh, I think they did a really good job here. Um, the frets, you know, there's no, no sharp frets or anything. Epiphones, you know, if you if you you know watch the YouTube videos, like I'm sure you do, like I do, uh, there's a lot of um, you know quality issues that people find with these guitars, uh, and I think that that's that's well founded. There are going to be some things like that, so you should probably play the guitar that you're you're gonna you're gonna get, you know, so you can make sure that it's kind of up to snuff and it feels good to you and that you kind of bond with it. Uh, with this one. I did that and everything uh, everything was fine. The action on the guitar, it's great. It's a little higher than I would like and the guitar came with uh, uh, 10 gauge strings, but I swapped them to nines and it really plays beautifully. Uh, sounds amazing. Um, but um, the quality issue I ran into shortly after I got it home was with this, uh, this strap button up here, the top strap button. So um, the if you attach a strap to this, and it's really kind of weird because it only happens with certain straps. If you put a strap on this, uh, the screw will, over the course of your playing, it will start to unscrew. And, you know, I've had, um, you know, practice sessions where, you know, I played standing up. And, you know, if I didn't catch it by, uh, you know, by the time that the screw was going to pop out, the guitar would have fallen. So I would, uh, I would, I would check the strap buttons. I mean... You know, that to me, that's really kind of a bummer because, you know, this is drilled in. So if they've screwed up the hole, you're going to have to or I'm going to have to get that, um, you know, professionally fixed. Or I know some people put toothpicks in there um, and have some success with that. But uh, for me, I, I probably and one of the things on my to do list for this guitar is to just put strap locks on it. Uh, I don't you know, the last thing I want is to drop this thing on the floor. Um, so that was that was really the only uh, big quality defect that that I found with my my Epiphone, um, and it's a good time to mention uh, where these guitars are made. So this guitar is actually made in China. I don't believe that Epiphone has always made their guitars in China, so I don't know if that has anything to do with the quality issues. Uh, I will say this that. Uh, the the country of origin, the fact that it's made in China, is kind of a real a, a, was a real negative for me because I didn't think that um, a six hundred dollar guitar would be Chinese made. You know, that's something that I was expect I, I would expect of you know guitars more in the two and three hundred dollar price range. Um, so you know when I found out that the guitar was made in China and you know it's not hidden, it's right on the back here. I just you know was kind of excited and too dumb to look. Um, you know, it was, it, it was it kind of, um, you know, it was kind of a, you know, small negative for me. Um, I, I would think that if they were making the guitars in China, uh, and I don't, you know, I don't know about Gibson's cost structure, but it seems like 600 bucks for, for a Chinese made instrument is too much. But, um, you know, we all have a, our different opinions on that. So you can make your own, your own call. Um, so um, moving on to uh, the the three-way switch so another complaint that you'll you'll hear about um, Epiphones is that the you know the pots and stuff are not very good uh, I haven't had any issues with these they don't scratch or anything in fact the Gibson that I have um, you know the bridge pickup uh, which is a fairly expensive uh, pickup I think it's a 500t um, the bridge pickup always kind of cuts out because the you know the the wires are you know placed in, in the body cavity in a way where sometimes it will short and then I have to kind of bang on the back of the guitar and it'll come back in. Uh, so I, I had problems with, you know, with the three-way switch on my Gibson, but I didn't have any problems with these uh, uh, or with this switch on the, the Epiphone. It works fine. Um, one of the great things about Les Pauls is how you can blend the two humbuckers together. Uh, and that's why, you know, complaints about the pots are, are really 
you know, sort of should be taken seriously. If um, if the, uh, the the two volumes or the two tone controls don't respond the way that you want them to, um, then it can be a real bummer. Uh, I have had no issues. Uh, both the the tone and the volume knobs work fine. Um, I really like the electronics uh, of this guitar. It's a, a real big positive, and one of the things I think this guitar has over a lot of the, the guitars in the price range are the um, the humbuckers and the switching system that it comes with. So the way that this, you have two uh, humbuckers here, they're Epiphone's version of um, Gibson's burst bucker pickups. I think these are called pro buckers, might be the other way around, but uh, it's, it's just Epiphone's, you know, cheaper version of what, you know, Gibson, what's in your standard Gibson. Um, but what you could do when you pull out the volume controls on either the bridge or the, um, or the neck pickup is to split the coils, which is really, really useful. Uh, it makes the guitar a lot more versatile. Uh, you know, sometimes humbucker guitars sound different through pedals that you might have on your board and, you know, it can, you, you, you want, you want to cut your signal, but you know, you get down to like, you know, the, the lowest volume setting and you still want to cut a little bit more. It, it's still too strong. So to have the ability to cut the, uh, to cut the pickup power uh, is, you know, it's a single coil mode is great. Does it sound like a Strat? It sounds more like a Strat than the humbucker sounds, that's for sure. But uh, I don't think that this guitar is, you know, it doesn't really uh, approach uh, Strat territory. But that's not really, to me anyways, that's not the selling point for having, you know, split coils. But if it is for you, you should know, you know, this guitar doesn't really sound like a Strat in, uh, in any of the settings. Um, as far as the pickups go themselves um you know different guitar companies uh the lower end pickups are you know are different sorts of live withable right so some of them are you know like i would say ibanez's lower end pickups are really quite good uh these i would say are, are not not quite as good they're uh they're perfectly acceptable the um the bridge pickup is fine you know it's uh it's a little bit bright um for me uh but um you know, it, you can work with it and you can get any sound that you need out of it for sure, especially with the tone control. Neck pickup, from, from to my ear, that's where there, there's, you know, kind of a, a clash. I don't particularly love the neck pickup. It seems to be uh, a bit muddy uh, and I, I rarely play on it. So what, what I, where I usually sit is in the middle. And, um, you know, I can get, you can get a really good tone in the middle position just with the... Um, the bridge pickup turned all the way up, and the uh, the neck pickup turned down just slightly. So that's uh, that's usually the the spot that I live. Um, and sometimes, occasionally, I'll go down to the bridge. Uh, but like I said, it's uh, it, it can it can be a little bit bright. So uh, the middle position to me is uh, is the place to be for this guitar. Um, so what else is there? The pick guard. So the pick guard uh, does not come off. It's screwed in to the body. Uh, some of the higher end Gibsons now, you can see the screw there. Some of the higher end Gibsons now, you can just take this pick guard off. Uh, and with like a guitar finish, you know, or, or a guitar kind of top like this that, you know, has nice looking flames on it, you might want to take it off uh, and, and just not have to deal with the fact that you have a piece of plastic there uh, obstructing your view. Uh, and I was kind of in the camp that I, I, I didn't like this, this look on Les Pauls. Uh, but having played this guitar and have, having it there, uh, I really got to say, it, functionally, it's really kind of nice to have something to rest your hand on. So I've really been enjoying it. It's, um, it's, it, you know, it sort of has proven itself to me. And uh, I, um, I'm now kind of indifferent to whether or not there's a pick guard on a guitar, uh, just because I had a good experience with this one. Um, one more thing about the pickups, and I think that this is really worth mentioning. It's kind of controversial. Uh, or by controversial, I mean some people love it, some people hate it. I, ha I happen to love it, um, and I'll get into why. So with these pickups, they have um, solderless connections. Like if you were to open up the, uh, the back of the guitar, um, and where would it be? It would be right, right here, the back of the guitar. Uh, the Epiphone um, the company has a, 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 what they call a quick connect system. So you can unplug the pickups, and if you get 
you know, a certain adapter for, you know, if you buy aftermarket pickups, you can buy also a uh, different adapter. Uh, and uh, through, you know, you can buy a quick connect adapter. If you have <laughs> bought aftermarket pickups, you can buy a quick connect, quick connect. <laughs> so if you buy aftermarket pickups, you can buy a quick connect adapter. And without soldering anything, you can change your pickups on the guitar. I really happen to like that. I'm just gonna reset my phone there. Um, I really, I really like the Quick Connect um, system because um, I don't like changing pickups on guitars. Uh, it's, a, it's just out of laziness. You know, it's kind of like a lot of work. You know, you, you know, if you're gonna do it yourself, you've got to go through the process of learning how to solder, which I don't know how to do. Uh, and then, you know, even if you know how to do it. You got to kind of set aside a Saturday and, and dedicate your time to it. Typically, when I have done that, I think I've only done it really once in the past. I've taken it to a shop and I've had it, have it had it done for me. Uh, and I don't like that either because, you know, this guitar, you know, one of the reasons I bought it was because it was somewhat of, uh, somewhat affordable. It was in the $600 range. So, um, you know, if you're going to buy pickups nowadays, uh, depending on which ones you get, you're looking at anywhere from a, another 120 to man, if you get Gibson pickups, you know you might be paying 300 bucks. You know, um, if you buy some of the good ones. So combine that with uh, installation costs, and it can really, you know, it to me it doesn't make sense to buy a guitar like this and and go through all that. Um, you you know if you if you have the the choice to save the additional money and just buy a guitar, you know, one level up, you know, with the pickups that you want. Um, but I do understand that some, you know, it is a time component to that too. Some people, um, you know, buy the guitar, they suffer with the, uh, the, the pickups in the guitar that the guitar comes with. And then over time they start to upgrade different components. Um, I just usually, once I, you know, kind of get something home, I just, uh, I, it takes a, a, a lot to move me to, uh, to, to do additional work on it. So, um, but for this guitar, I probably am going to change the pickups out at some point because uh, I do have a quick connect, uh, I can't say it, quick connect adapter. And uh, I would really like to hear what this guitar sounds like with different pickups because um, the pickups to me are really kind of the biggest, uh, biggest downside. Um, but, you know, uh, overall, I love the guitar, and it's one of the guitars, you know, in my collection that I play the most, um, which is kind of a testament to, to how good it is. And I will add um, one more thing, is that my, my guitar teacher, he gigs with one of these. Um, it's not this exact model, uh, because he's had it for a lot longer. I think his is, um, you know, from back when Epiphone was making their guitars in Korea, but it, it's overall the same thing, and I've seen him... Uh, play all kinds of stuff on this that you wouldn't even attribute to, you know, to Les Paul. So you got a um, a really nice guitar here that you know if you take care of it, it can last you a long long time. Uh, so the um, the last thing that I was going to do for you guys was to show you some of the tones. So what I have um, as far as the rig goes is I'm coming out of the guitar. And I'm going straight into a, uh, a Boss Katana. Uh, it's a Mark II 100 watt head. Uh, I've got it running to a 1x12 cab with a Celestian red back. Um, I've got my own presets uh, that you know I, I've just developed for your simple, you know, clean tone and then uh, crunch tones. And you know, high, I've got a higher gain tone here that I could probably use. Um, but the um, the what was I gonna say the um, oh who would this guitar be best for so I think that this is something I, I wanted to talk about that in this video as well as who who would this guitar be best for uh, you know when I was a beginner my first guitar was really not very good it was a Martin Stinger which uh, they've kind of had a little bit of a resurgence now that people are going back and buying some of those super shredder guitars from the 80s and early 90s again but what I remember about that guitar is it was uh, it didn't really play very well the action was really high and as a beginner I didn't know that 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 was kind of an issue uh, so what I would say is that uh, I do think that this guitar would be you know miles ahead of anything that I had to 
to play when I first started out. Uh, however, um, depending on what, you know, your knowledge, if you're a beginner, if you don't know the, the quality issues you're going to run into, uh, and knowing that these guitars do sometimes have quality issues, I don't really know that I would recommend this guitar for a beginner. I think that this guitar is best for intermediate players that don't want to pay for a full-on Les Paul because this guitar fully, you know, will fully serve that, you know, kind of purpose uh, for, for, for most guys. Uh, and, um, you know, if you don't want to, you know, Les Pauls now are very, very expensive. And I think that this is a, a real legitimate and very good substitute that, um, you know, if you if you like to play a different type of guitar besides Les Pauls and you don't want to invest the, you know, the 2,500 to three grand, uh, this is this is something that you, you really should consider. For beginners, um, you know, I would, I, I for me, for my money, if I was starting out again, I would go with something from Fender, you know, a Mexican Strat, or maybe even one of the Squires. I've played a lot of Mexican Strats and they seem to be consistently good. Um, so that's just uh, my two cents for anybody who's just starting out. Uh, obviously, um, you know, like I said, uh, in today's day and age, in today's guitar market, everything is a lot better than it used to be. So I'm sure every, you know, you'll survive, uh, but it would be like a real bummer if you got one of these things and, you know, some of the electronics were shot, you know, and you, you didn't really know that, that they were, you know, and you're playing the guitar and thinking everything's okay and wondering why you can't get a good tone or, you know, the action is all off and you don't know that that's, that's an issue. So you can't really, uh, you just think playing the guitar is really hard. And I think that that's, you know, something that I would probably recommend avoiding. Um, so Anyways, without all that being said, let's uh, let's see what I got here. I've got uh, all the volume and tone controls turned up on the on the guitar, which I'll I'll tell you when I change going forward. And I think I'm in the I'm in the uh, I'm on the clean patch right now. Uh, there's there's no effects running on this, so this is basically just what the the katana would sound like clean. Here we go. <laughs> To get a little warmer, you can turn the treble uh, down a little bit, or the tone down a little bit. Um, and then on the neck pickup, that would be... Bridge position. 
Now let's uh, let's get into the middle position. This is uh, with the volumes and the tones both all the way up. Now let's uh, turn the neck down just a bit. The neck turned up and the uh, the treble pickup uh, turned down. The bridge pickup turned down. Treble pickup up, neck pick up down a little bit more. So yeah, just, you know, really basic sounding new, uh, and kind of cool. Um, tones coming out of it. I am going to get my battery plugged in here and then we'll take a look at um, some higher gain sounds. Okay, so uh, I've got a kind of a bluesy patch here and I am on the neck pickup. position volumes all the way up going to turn the neck down a little bit turn down Bridge pickup, volume and tone all the way up. Middle 
middle position. We're gonna turn the uh, the treble pickup down a little bit. <laughs> Turn the neck pickup down, turn the treble pickup back up. sounding guitar. Uh, let's do um, let's do more of a um, lead tone. Looking for the noise gate. There it is. All right, let's see what we got on the bridge. position now. Oh, 
yeah, the neck it's 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 warm, it, but you know when it's driven like this, I don't I don't really care for uh, the sound. It doesn't really seem to to cut through as much. So I would always kind of be here, and still I'm looking for a little bit more. So I'm gonna turn the I turn the neck down. That's a nice way to to kind of dial in the the. The level of warmth that you want is to, you know, have the the pickup set at different volumes. Because you can have the neck all the way down here. Uh, it's on about one right now, so it's basically just you're using the the uh, the treble pickup, and you can bring it in. And for me, like on, on about six or seven is when it sounds best. And uh, that reminds me of one thing, one other thing that's cool about uh, just Les Paul guitars in general is if you have this pickup, uh, the neck pickup turned off and the bridge pickup turned on from the middle position, you can get kind of a stutter effect. So I think that's uh, that's pretty cool. So you don't have to have one of those uh, kill switch buttons put into your guitar, uh, but you might have to invest in some more um, more switches after a while, because <laughs> uh, that that can't be uh, that can't be the intended use for um, for for this for the switch here. So you might burn through a couple doing that. Um, so that's really about it. My overall uh, impression of this guitar or my review of this guitar, I really love it. It's, uh, like I said, one of my favorite guitars to play. I would be wary if you're a beginner. Uh, you really want the instrument, and this is just my opinion to, uh, you know, other people have different kind of attitudes. Uh, you really want an instrument that you know is set up properly as a beginner, that you know has no defects, uh, so that you don't get discouraged and, and you know, think that the guitar is, is hard to play. That used to be a real big thing for me, you know, especially when I was learning how to fret and everything. Um, you know, it was hard enough, uh, you know, just on, on its own. If, if you throw in a poorly set up instrument, it just, it's kind of a nightmare. And I want you guys to uh, enjoy playing the guitar as much as I do. It's my favorite thing to do. Uh, so with that being said, I hope you guys all have a, a, a great rest of your week. And um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. I am not a professional reviewer, not a professional YouTuber. I don't have any intentions to be, but uh, I, uh, I, would like to give you guys uh, some content and uh, welcome you into my community if you're you're for it. So let me know that uh, that you're into it with a like and a subscribe, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Thank you all. Rock on.